Hello guys and welcome to another Pro Tipster Weekend Preview video. I'm here with Pro Tipster Dan. I'm Pro Tipster Paddy. Of course, don't forget your name, you big idiot. And I'm here with Pro Tipster Dan and we're going to have a look at a couple of interesting matches over the weekend. Of course, there's the Manchester Derby, the Liverpool Derby. There's a nice one for the Championship I like the look of. And there's another one happening up in the North East as well. Hello Dan. Hi Paddy. How's it going? Ah, you know, different guy. Yeah. And it's funny, like, we already asked this, like, a few times in the morning, or once in the morning, and then you come on video and you have to ask it again. <laughs> we can, like, as if we haven't seen each other for an hour already this morning. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, look. Uh, the first one I want to talk about is happening on Friday night, and we have fourth place Sheffield United taking on Bristol City, who are in third. Now, I think the wheels have come off a little bit on the Sheffield United gave gravy train, but their home record is still pretty good. Um, and, 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 uh, do you see Anton in this match at all? The um, fancy. You're right. The wheels have come off Sheffield United. No winning three. Um, they, uh, surprisingly lost to Fulham 5-4. Mm. They very surprisingly drew with Birmingham City 1-1. Yeah. Um, they should have beaten, uh, they should have beaten Birmingham City at home. And now they face the Bristol City side that are unbeaten at home, uh, sorry, unbeaten away from home since the top of August. Yeah, Bristol are really good on the road. Um, who are, Bang in form, and it's going to be a real test of their promotion credentials, I think. Um, well, what I do uh, fancy with this one is goals. Um, I'm sure you pulled the stats, mm. but Overs, I, I, I've got to imagine Overs has got to be quite low in arts because... It's not too bad, it's 1.81 at the moment. That, that all day then. Yeah. Um, if you look at Sheffield United, uh, their last five games, I think it's three times they've been over, two and a half. Um, so it's four times, the last three, at, uh, three of the last five at home. Similar sort of stats, Bristol City away. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I would go for overs at 1.81. Yeah, well, I have them here. So, overall, right? Overall, there's been 7 out of 10 have been overs for both teams. That's home and away. Mm -hmm. At home, Sheffield United have only had 4, though. But Bristol have had 6. So, I think the odds are I think they're fairly good. Yeah. Especially, both, both teams are, are wanting to, to keep up the pressure on, on, on going for those promotion places. Yeah, I, I, I think both teams are attacking teams as well. Um, you, look, you look at the kind of goals they score. You look at the goal... That Sheffield United scored against Millwall. They lost 3-1, but they still scored a cracker. Yeah. Um, you look at how much pressure they put on Birmingham City when they drew that game 1-1. They should have won it. Um, they, the reason, I, I'm not even sure why they didn't. Um, there was great defending, um, throughout the second half of Birmingham City that kept them out. So they're obviously, you know, while they've gone through a bit of a, a bit of a down patch, I don't think it's because they've, um, they've, They've lost ability. It's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I, I would say goals. That's a good opportunity for them as well because, um, you know, it's Friday night. They can go into the weekend then if they if they win this, they can go into the weekend just relaxed and okay. We have loads of days off now and prepare for the next one. I suppose well, Bristol could look at it the same way. Mm -hmm. Though you know, Bristol are doing very well as well. So. As an aside, um, if you've got Twitter, Bristol City's Twitter account, follow them uh, for the game because their goal gifts are the best on the internet. <laughs> they're, and they're, they're, they've got new ones every week. They're yeah. amazing. So that's my tip. Cool. Good one. Right. Uh, let's move on to the Premier League then. There's three matches I want to talk about. First is uh, Newcastle, Leicester. Newcastle are down 15th. Uh, Leicester are moving up the table. They're up to ninth now. Uh, you wrote a brilliant article the other day or yesterday about uh, Rafa Benitez. Tell us a bit about it. Um, yeah, Rafa Benitez, um, he, uh, he's, he's making noises. He's not happy with the ambition, uh, the transfer funds. Um, there's a little bit of off the field strife at Newcastle Manchester, uh, because, uh, Mike Ashley, uh, the owner wants to sell. He's put it up for 300 million. And there's been a couple of, um, bids by a consortium fronted by English businesswoman, Amanda Stavely. And he's, he's not, he knocked back the first one, which was 250 million. She came back and said, okay, 250 million up front. And he's, he's intimated he's not interested in that. But you're looking at a negotiation period of like six weeks, mm. which takes you into January. Oh, so they'll miss the, the yeah, window. Yeah, you've got to ask yourself, if Ashley's negotiating to sell the club, is he going to put any money in for transfers? No. No. And, you know, the, that, David Shinola was on TalkSport saying, you know, it should be a crisis if Benitez lost New, uh, left Newcastle. But, Go ask yourself, is, is that true? Because Newcastle's recent form is dire. Um, they're actually 20th in the table, in the Premier League table for form over the last six games. Um, it's steadily got worse over the last six, seven weeks. Um, you pull statistics from PremierLeague.com. 
They're fourth in the table for dispossessions per game. This is where a player's caught possession, not the dribble and lost the ball, but they've got the ball and lost it. Nice. Right. Okay. So that means they're turning over the ball far more often than they should. Just forgetting how to play football. Well, it, it, it's, <laughs> it, it, it's 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 a bad stat to have because <laughs> you look at um like Swansea. I wrote about Swansea can't score. Um, they don't make chances. They don't make chances on goal. Whereas Newcastle do. They're really high up the table for those shots and shots on target. Mm. But if they're losing the ball continually midfield, then it doesn't matter because they'll give away yeah. too much as well, and that's showing. Then they face a Leicester City side who are rejuvenating under Claude Puel, who have found that by moving Mares up front, um, despite his Draco Malfoy uh, haircuts, <laughs> uh, they found that Malfoy, Malfoy, uh, Malfoy, Malfoy. Right? <laughs> you see, he's catching. <laughs> um, moving Mares up front has has made a lot of difference, and he's allowed them to play Gray on the wing or Brighton on the other wing, and it's given them so much more. Yeah. I don't know if you saw, but Leicester City playing the Czech Trade Trophy in midweek. Yeah, the under the under twenty three team. Yeah, forty five million pounds <laughs> worth of talent. <laughs> Czech Trade Trophy, great for English kids. Yeah, Nacho was playing, and Ujoa, Uloa, however you say his Ujoa, name, he yeah. was playing, and yeah, there was loads of like, you know, fringe first team. Yeah, Daniel Amati played. <laughs> it was nuts. <laughs> but Chel- did you see Chelsea last night? No. So Michi Batshuayi came on in their game in the Champions League. Then the next day, played in the Czech Republic and scored City. twice. Yeah, played ninety minutes. Huh? And Chelsea. Was that a punishment? I don't know, but Chelsea played a really strong team. Uh, but Batshuayi played, Musonda played, uh, Kennedy played, Ethan Ampadu, their their young wonderkin played. It's like, okay, hmm. um, some of them I can accept because you know the younger players, but Batshuayi. Yeah, the, that's weird. Well, that, that you know, you've got to wonder if that was punishment. You know, like you yeah, maybe because someone who who came out, someone one of the pundits came out and said he falls asleep. Was it Lampard? Uh, it was, no, he didn't say that about Batshuayi. He said it about Will. Did he say it? About yeah, it was no, it was Batshuayi. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I don't know. But why would can't anyway? Whatever. Um, do you see Le- Leicester winning this? They, Le- Leicester have scored first in seven out of eleven away, and Newcastle have conceded first in four out of seven at home. I've gone for the draw in this game. Um, because whilst Leicester are decent on the road, they do draw more often than not. Mm. And whilst I, Newcastle's form's not great, I think the statistics show that it, it's not some, it's not because they're necessarily not creating chances, it's just because they're losing the ball too much. Yeah. If they can get that sorted, if they can retain the ball better, then they won't concede so many goals. Yeah. One would well, think. Newcastle, they're not that bad at home. I just stats it. At home, they have five wins, two draws, three losses. Leicester away from home is only two wins, four draws, and four losses. So, you know, yeah, definitely. I, I think, I think draw, draws a good show here, especially because you know Leicester are playing well and Newcastle. They're always, they're always okay at home. You know, it's their away form that's just muck. Let's move on then to uh, the second biggest game of the weekend, the Liverpool uh, derby. Uh, I, I looked for some decent stats here. All I could find was that Liverpool have won by two or more against middle. Uh, middle third teams, but that that's not much of a stat because it changes so much. I, I, I don't understand why people give out stats like that. They're really good against against teams in second position or third position, yeah, or whatever. But like, yeah, so many teams get into that position. It's a pointless stat. Um, it's Mark Twain, isn't it? Yeah, 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 exactly, man, exactly that. For those who don't know what that means, there are three kinds of lies in this world: lies, damn lies, and statistics. <laughs> it's true. It's absolutely true. You can use stats to prove that, and just like the Bible. <laughs> um, uh, I think Sam Allardyce here, the new Everton manager. I think he's onto a winner here, no matter what happens. They can go in and get hammered, and Sam will still look all right because they played well in the, the the match before he took over and his first match. And if they if they get hammered tomorrow, no one's going to read or tomorrow on a, on Sunday against Liverpool. It's not going to really matter because uh, Liverpool have played so brilliantly at the moment. That uh, if 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 they get stunk, if Everton gets stunk, doesn't matter. And if Everton pull off a draw, then Sam's a, a genius. Yeah, I, I I think Sam might be getting hammered tonight. Actually, <laughs> um, it's for those of you who don't know, Everton play uh, upon a Limassol tonight, and Sam isn't going as he has a pre-arranged medical oh, appointment. Yeah, he's rather sure. convenient. That. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Liverpool. I, I, what's it? I said in the Champions League podcast, I can't see him scoring three. Yeah. But the last time I said that, they scored seven. So what did they do last night? Went and scored seven. Um, up front, they were unreal. Again, again, they're so good. Um, Mane, 
Coutinho, Firmino, mm-hmm. Salah. Unreal. Um, and Spartak didn't know anything to test them. Yeah, I that. didn't see the match. Who did they play at the back? Um, they played uh, Clavan and Lovren at the back. Oh, okay, they went back to the normal game. I think that, no, I think they played three at the back because, uh, I don't know. I, I know I saw Clavan and Lovren. Yeah. I, I didn't actually, I only caught the goals. Okay. So I, I didn't actually watch the game itself. Um, but this is the thing, so I, if, Everton played tonight in upon Limassol, and as far as I know, it's going to be, they really don't care. Mm. They're going to play the kids. They're, they're, they've got the worst ever record for an English team in the Europa League, and they don't give the monkeys. Mm. Um, so I don't know who, who's going to play, you know, it could be, you know, the tea lady, the cleaning your dar, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Are they going to be up for this at all? Do you think they'll show up for Anfield? I think they will. I think they'll, I, I, it's going to be an interesting reception for Sammy Lee, isn't it? Mm. Um, I think I think Sam's already worked his magic. Um, people, I, I saw a lot being said about Wayne Rooney in midfield about how he's, uh, he's 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 settled into the role really well. And I think, well, Sam in his one game as England manager yeah. really played outstanding. And Sam said well, Rooney can play where he wants. And I think it's going to be the same. You know, he knows that he can trust Wayne Rooney yeah. to be the the, the the midfield. You know. Maestro, but they're going to get to caught. Things tick. They, they'll get caught out a lot then, though, if they have Sigurdsson and and and, and, and Rooney playing kind of roving roles in midfield. They're going to have a big gaping hole there. So but a lot of teams are, are going to exploit that, probably down the line. It depends how many people they play behind them. Um, you know, if they play like three at the back and the, you know five, yeah, five Ashley man Williams, midfield. Would you trust Ashley Williams right <laughs> now? <laughs> right now, I trust. I'd rather trust you, Dar. <laughs> um, which I believe is the Twitter word of 2017. <laughs> um, odds here, 1.29 for Liverpool to win. It's, it's ridiculously short. The Asian handicap, uh, minus a goal and a half for 1.81. Um, or Everton. I plus. am very, very scared about backing against Liverpool right now. Um, because they're, they're just in such great form. And, um, Mohamed Salah apparently cannot stop scoring. So I would be tempted to back Liverpool on that Asian handicap, but. It's a derby, so it's a really tough one mm-hmm. to call. Yeah. Maybe the one the bet to go for would be goals. Well, overs is only one point four seven. Over three point five is two point two. I would be tempted by the three point five. Yeah. I really would be tempted by the three point five. All right, let's move on then to the final match. Then we had a podcast about this already. Check it out on uh, iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, all that, and the podcast about a combined eleven. So we looked at both Manchester United and Manchester City squads and picked our. Our best starting eleven from that. The rules were simple: no suspended or injured players. So check that out. And no players with bird poop in their mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Got to watch it. Another joke. No one with bird poop. Uh, so look, second place Man United are taking on um, champions elect Manchester City, who are in first. City have won nine out of ten away, and they scored first in eleven out of fifteen away from home. What's going to happen here? Um, okay, so Man City lost in Shakhtar. Yeah. Although they did play a slightly rotated squad, Phil Foden made his full debut, mm. as I thought he might. Um, and I'm actually the, guy, the defender whose name you couldn't pronounce, Tushin Adar Adarabai. Uh, yeah, him, him. He played. Yeah, he played too. Um, as did Brahim Diaz came mm-hmm. on as a sub. Um, I'm actually kind of pleased Man City lost because it means they go into this game without that record hanging over them. Whereas Man U have got this 40 games without defeat at home, which is one hell of a record, mm. but you wonder if that one's going to fall. Um, the Man U looked a lot better against Chester. A lot better. Lukaku found the net once again. Um, they won't have a Pogba, unfortunately. Um, this, um, which I think he's going he's gonna to be a bit of a loss for them. You know, he played well in midweek. And, you know, as befits a £100 million player. <laughs> um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, and David Silva. Um, didn't play last night and he could be out for the weekend as well. So it's, it's, um, I think that could be a loss as well because, you know, he's, he's a little genius, isn't mm-hmm. he? Um, it'd be interesting to see how Pep sets up because his normal kind of 4-3-3, um, I'm not sure if that'll work against Man United. You know, you've got Sane on one side and Sterling on the other against Valencia and Young, maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Or if they come in a bit narrower, um, Man United tend to play, you know, are they going to play three at the back? Are they going to play four at the back? I'm not sure. Um, I think this is going to be a real test of, of, of both managers. Mourinho 
came through in his top six uh, test against Arsene Wenger, but he's got an Indian sign over Arsene Wenger. Can he do it again against Pep? Mm. Okay. The Arsenal match is funny because within the first what twelve minutes they were tuning down and yeah it was weird. I think I think Arsenal just I think United set up to, to defend in that match, but then they realised oh, wait no Arsenal are stepping way back here, so let's 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 go for this and and they got two quick goals out of their first two attacks and I I don't think anyone I don't think Mourinho expected anything like that. Wenger didn't expect it and I I don't know I I think I think they got lucky. Yeah. Well, they did, and they were the, I mean, Arsenal threw everything at them as well. And this is the thing as well: is David de Gea going to play the game of his life? You can't again? have two games in your life in a row. You can't, you know, because he's going to need to be good. Yeah. Um, you know, if Man City's forward liner in any kind of form, he's going to need to be good. Yeah. Um, it's going to be the game of the weekend. Are you going to bet on this at all, or just just watch it and have fun? Um, have a pint and watch it. I'll probably just have a pint and watch it, but. I'll see what the lineups are when they mm. come out. Um, I think that's going to be an intriguing bit, how, how they set up. Because I think if Pep gets it right, then Manchester will win. But it, will he get it right? Yeah, look, overs is probably the highest it's been priced for a Man City game all season so far. It's 1.83. So, I'll be tempted, but yeah. will, will, will Mourinho pop the boss? Mm. Yeah, stuff to know. Well, look, it looks like it's going to be a good weekend of football anyway. Um, for me, Pro Tips are Paddy, Pro Tips are Dan, that's pretty much it. Make sure and check out protipster.com where you can earn real money by sharing your winning football tips and other sports as well. There's how many sports, Dan? Five six. sports, six sports, six sports, wow! And, uh, yeah, hit that red button and subscribe to us here on YouTube and you'll get daily videos, previews, podcasts, strategy videos and tips as well. Make sure and check us out on uh, iTunes, Stitcher and Android podcast apps as well. Alright, look. Enjoy the football. Speak to you soon. Look.